Hello and welcome to Stories Across Borders. Here we discuss stories told across a variety of different mediums, books, movies, games, all that good stuff. The only rule is that we can only talk about things in terms of the story. Anything like art, acting, animation, or mechanics is off-limits unless it relates directly to how the story is being told. I am Daniel Radford, author, masked vigilante, and also your host. And today I am joined by Marv. Hello. Hi. Uh, you Thank may you for having me back. I'm happy to have you back. Yeah, you, you may remember Marv from the Secrets of Slumber episode. And if you don't remember Marv from that episode, you should go and listen to that episode. Yes, please. Wait, we're starting episode. with a hard sell today. <laughs> So, today, uh, we're going to be doing an episode on superhero stories, which, interesting things, superhero stories, really, uh, you know, they originated way back with stuff like Zorro and the Spider and the Phantom, you know, typical Mask Crusader stuff, and then sort of gradually evolved into, well, something super, with the introduction of characters like Superman in the 40s and 50s. So, they've come a long, long way since then, and have kind of just grown to become this massive part of popular culture across pretty much the world in general and you know and invading many different types of media we have them in their original comic book origins to novels to, to serials to triple a movies like the mcu and the dceu they've come a very mm -hmm. very long way and are now just a little oversaturated of anything <laughs> i agree yeah that's fair they're very oversaturated nowadays and feels like they're just churning them out just to churn them out <laughs> i mean that's the curse with anything popular like it blows up and then everyone starts doing it and the people who are already do it keep doing it and it spirals yeah. those more and more yeah but to an extent that also leads to innovation because you get people who are like okay but what if i did that but different and you start getting some really interesting spins on the uh, popular topic as well yeah for sure i definitely like to try to gravitate to like non-mainstream adaptations of superhero things which are always nice to do because it's like it's not just the same old handful of characters that you, you get all the time so it's like cool I, I like this this is different it shows them as flawed and stuff and speaking of, like the one show i think it was called alphas did that it was like only lasted one season maybe two where it's like yeah these bunch of random people have some superpowers but like they also came with heavy heavy drawbacks and i was like i like this this is pretty cool yeah i mean i've it is get ready to already take your shot listeners uh i'm i've mentioned many times on this podcast that i'm a huge fan of worm and ward and that's one of the things i like about that is that a common theme is you don't get the powers you'd want yeah i still have to yet to read it it's on my to it's on my to read list i just haven't gotten around to it there's just so much for me to read there's, and there's, there's watch but so i do want to read it so much stuff out there so it's understandable and it's long it's really long yeah that was also kind of a deterrent it's like oh my gosh it's like jumping into like those long-term mangas it's like it's just so long like oh my god I have to catch up yeah at least it's, it's ended though so yeah both worm and ward have ended but they're both like yeah, yeah. 30 arcs long and each arc has got like seven chapters plus there's interludes and both of them are like several novels worth of content yeah they're really long uh, but before I get off on that tangent, because we're going to be doing an actual worm episode in this cycle, because how could I not? Yay! Superheroes in general, and I think that's, you kind of touched on something with like gravitating more and more to the more niche, obscure cases. And I think that makes sense because a lot of, a lot of the stories you see in superhero stories have been tread, or rather they're well trodden ground, you know, it's the same stories and same themes over and over again. Something I've mm -hmm. noticed though is that right is that the subversive is almost becoming normal right now, where we had a slew of more typical, less gritty superhero stories, and then you know people started doing more quotation marks grounded, gritty, dark stories. Mm hmm. Yeah, because like there for a bit we did have like the really gritty ones coming out because we had like you know Daredevil and Jessica Jones and like the really dark turns on a lot of things like i think like the t the titans like the teen titan one for netflix was also started off dark i never watched it but i think that was I also like a dark either. take I've, I've heard mixed things i've heard some people say it was terrible some people go it's not bad not great but 
Yeah, I've heard mixed as well, but I'm like, I'm interested, haven't gotten to it yet. Again, too much stuff, but I'm like, yeah, I heard it was kind of like a bit of a darker thing too. And, but yeah, there for a bit, it was just like, here's some dark things. And they're like, you know, let's go back to doing some lighter things again, like She-Hulk, which I loved. A lot of people didn't. I loved it. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I, I mean, that's the nature. Of, like, I talked about, I, I wrote an article series, right, about types of hero in stories recently. And one of the things that I re like I talked about going into that was that when something becomes the norm, people start going out of their way to subvert that. So we yeah. had a bunch of Paragon heroes where they're like really popular stuff that everyone loved. So we started getting a lot of people trying to break stand out from the crowd by doing anti heroes and mm -hmm. more edgy mm -hmm. heroes and things like that. But now we're getting to a point where so many people are trying to be subversive by doing that that it's uh, almost more subversive to do a traditional Paragon. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's like getting cyclical to the point where it's like, yeah, just, just, just everywhere you go, just gonna be more superheroes, and it's just gonna keep coming back to those main ones because those are just like you know common household names that everyone knows. So I mean, all stories are like that to an extent, like all genres, all tropes, whatever, like that to an extent where eventually it's, the subversion becomes the norm, and then everything gets flipped or whatever. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that that's happening. It's just the way stories mm -hmm. evolve. I oh, do take sure, like... issue with people taking existing, like, traditional paragons and trying to edge them up in ways that are not true to the character, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, I know there's a lot of, like, anger about that on the internet when, they t when certain people, like, take characters and, like, completely change them and whatnot, but it's, like, it all depends on, like... The per like why are they doing said thing and changing said characters aspects is it like you know trying to modernize it is it just doing it for the shock value is it doing it because like it makes sense if they were to exist in this time and age i guess it just depends but like sometimes i don't mind i'm trying to think of a and i, I kept trying to think of an example right now where i'm like you know what? i don't mind that they did this with this character because I mean, you know it kind of makes sense but it, it's kind of everyone's go-to but i think as far as taking a superhero character and making them a little bit more realistically quotation mark edgy. I do think the Dark Knight trilogy did that really well. Oh, yes. It was a really good trilogy. I enjoyed Where that. Those movies very much. It, it never felt like the story was being untrue to like the concept of the character of Batman in the way that they portrayed him as, you know, brooding and tired and you know, struggling yeah. to define the difference between the hero and the identity, which one was really, you know. But then yeah. you look at stuff no, like Man of Steel. Oh my god. Where you have fucking Superman blasting through bu uh, buildings, c causing all this collateral damage, and that is yeah. so against the core of the character. Yeah, like, I... I, I... I will, I will stand and die on this hill that, I, you know, I hate Superman. I just do. I'm not huge on him. He's just, to me, again, personal. Like He just feels like a Mary Sue and whatever. But, like, yeah, watching Man of Steel, like, his core is that he tries to do minimal amount of damage as possible. He, you know, and all that crap. And then just, and it, but, yeah, Man of Steel felt like it was needlessly dark for the sake of being dark. And that's why the DCU was kind of, like, fell apart for, a, like, quite for, a bit. Cause for, every like, right out the gate, they had problems. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I was just like, I, I was even late to the game to watch it's Man of Steel, I think. I think I ended up watching Justice League before I saw Man of Steel. But it was just like, what the heck is happening? Like, the only one that I liked was Wonder Woman. I loved Wonder Woman. I, went I, to, I saw it twice it, in yeah. theaters. I, I need it's to so, it. so good. Don't watch Wonder Woman 2, though. I heard it wasn't great. But Wonder Woman, the first one, was just like, finally, you're doing something right. Like, it feels like this is the character. It's great. It was fantastic. I loved it. That's that's good. It's, it's funny you talked about uh, hating Superman, like not enjoying the character, right? I used to be in yeah. the same camp. I thought it was like the the idea of the you know the ultimate good guy, this perfect individual. I found it to be boring and dull, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess but, in that respect, then you got to be more creative, then, because it's like okay, who can beat him? Like barely, ba basically nobody. So then you got to get more creative with well, like having actual like you know, stuff for him to deal with, because, you know, he's supposed to fight the things, and he can beat all the things, you gotta get more creative with that kind of stuff, but yeah, it's like, that, eh. That's the thing, right? Uh, have you... I, so I watch a, a lot of uh, overly sarcastic productions videos. Have you seen any of their stuff? I've not heard of them, no. Okay. Very, very cool, very much 
much bigger than me uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> sort of split between doing pop culture from one presenter and history and stuff from another, but they turned me around on the idea of Superman uh, in a lot of their analysis, where they pointed out that the fact that he's invincible it basically isn't the point. The point is to focus on the fact that he has all of this power and still chooses to do good with it. You don't challenge okay. the character by throwing things at him for him to hit, the challenge of that character is just existing in the world with the pressures of being who he is, whilst mm. also trying to minimalize collateral damage and save as many people as possible. The thing that makes it right, interesting or... is that he always has to make the hard choice. Uh huh. And that I that got me thinking about that one storyline where Joker ends up killing Lois Lane, and then he ends up turning turning bad because he's like, "Yo, I can't deal with it anymore. I'm we're turning in this all into I'm a dictatorship now." Kind of thing is what happens. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's he kills the Flash actually. No, Joker kills Lois Lane. Uh, I guess he's killed a lot of people in different continuities. Oh, but... he does kill a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a timeline where Joker kills Lois. I. And yeah, and and that happens, and then he ends up being like, "I'm a," and then I I think he ends up killing the Joker back, I believe, if I remember. I'm getting this like animated yeah, animated this sounds movies. Sounds a lot like the Injustice timeline the where he kill, where the Joker dies and he takes over and like goes full dictator. People really love Injustice. Toast, oh yeah, no, that happens. If, that, yeah, that happens in Injustice as well. Yeah, no, there's a few timelines where Superman goes all. Yeah, but because of certain people that, dying. That idea of focusing less on, like, oh, look what he could do with his powers, and more focusing on, like, this is how hard it is to be this, per like, to be this quotation marks perfect individual. Mm -hmm. Right. And the idea of, all, right. of having to save as many people. His, his challenge is never win. His challenge is he can't let anyone else die in the process. He has to always make the correct or even not even the correct, the difficult decision, and succeed. Okay. And reframing it in terms of, no longer being in terms of, oh, the invincible do-gooder to the struggle of having to be that character, that individual, especially when his act, like, the question always is, who is, is his personality really like this, that, or is he more like, you know, this Clark Kent, you know, is it a persona or whatever? Well, Clark Kent is definitely his secret identity, his real identity is Superman. I actually think it's the other way around. Uh, I don't have any key examples here, but... Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking of the Kill Bill speech, where I'm just like, yeah, this makes sense to me. And ever since then, that's clicked, and I'm like, yeah, Clark Kent is the secret identity, because it's like, have you seen Kill Bill? I have seen Kill Bill, but it's been a while. Uh, well, in the second Kill Bill, the Bill gives like this whole thing where it's like, Superman is... Uh, Clark Kent is Superman's criticism of the human race, I think it is, or something. Because he's like, yeah, this is how he sees humans is weak, flub flubbering all over the place. Because, you know, in like the old <laughs> shows and stuff. Something TV. tells me Bill has not seen, many, not engaged with this media very much. I, well, this is, I don't know, this is Bill, he's an assassin. I don't know what he's, how what media he's... But in their time, they didn't have all that much Superman. We have so many different adaptations of Superman and Lois and stuff nowadays, so it's like... I mean, yeah, that's fair. There's so much, but... But yeah, it's an interesting thing, right? But I don't yeah. want to make this a Superman episode, so I should probably... No, I was careful, about to but... say, I'm like, let's <laughs> not just talk about Superman. Uh, let's talk but, about other I mean, cool that's, people. That's one of the things that I think is cool about superhero stories, right? Is that you can, rather than frame them as stories of cool guy does cool thing with power, you can suddenly mm -hmm. change it to be a you can frame them in terms of identity or morality or ethics. And, that and that's kind lot. of what Miss Marvel, that's why Ms., that's what Miss Marvel did and that caused a lot of people to get upset and spaghetti about it. Because, like, yeah, she didn't have to, like, quote-unquote work or search for her power. She had them the entire time. But then the thing she was actually searching for throughout the movie is actually who was she, like, where did she stand in, like, the grand scheme of things and figure all that crap out. That was her journey. It wasn't like, hey, how can I be, you know stronger or whatever she always was that the entire time and only when she accepted it she was just like cool i'm a one punch you jude law and not care about what you think about me <laughs> i have not actually seen that movie but you haven't uh the oh my god hearing I, I, I have not really seen any of the marvel stuff that came out after endgame this was before endgame wait really oh yeah it would have to yes 
It's Captain Marvel. I, I called like... him. I said Miss Marvel, didn't I? I meant Captain. I'm sorry. That's fine. I meant Captain Marvel yeah. with Brie Larson. That's I said Miss Marvel by accident. Also, a great TV show, by the way. Y'all need to watch that. It's great. But <laughs> I meant Captain Marvel. My bad. My bad. Captain Marvel. Okay. Yeah. That's I, what I mean. I also have to say that, but I really should. But um, that that was before Endgame. Yeah. I guess there's still. Some, I mean, there's still some stuff from before oh I haven't gosh. seen. too, I admit? There's a lot. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 That's uh, fine. That's fair. I can hear the disappointment. Well, I'm just saying, if you're gonna watch the end game, you gotta watch what led up to it. I'm just, it gives the whole, you know, but it's fine. There's a lot of 90s nostalgia in it too, it's great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if, if people took issue with that, all I can say is that your taste is wrong. Yeah. It's... I, I try to take the stance <laughs> as much as possible that, you know, taste is subjective, but no, if your problem with the, with the movie was that it had a storyline, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't. You. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's they were just upset. It wasn't the same cookie cutter guy power fantasy story. It was something different, and it had a female led character. And then it's just like, mm. but also that's mm. basically been again that has basically been the plot point, like the storyline for so many other superheroes for so I long know. that I can't help but think yeah. maybe the problem isn't the story. It's about it's about the character. Y yeah. Mm. Yeah, like because well, that's why like people get burnt out a bit, like with a lot of with the Marvel stuff, because it seemed like there was the same cookie cutter thing happening. So like when they come out with other storylines and properties that are slightly different, like Loki was even different, which was fantastic. Loved Loki. Again, Ms. Marvel. It was for sure a slightly younger audience, but I it was fantastic and fabulous. And she, you know, she's in high school, or whatever. But like the way yes. you know the story was told. It was adapted for the M specifically for the MCU. It's slightly different with her powers and stuff, but still worked fabulously. Loved it. The actress, fantastic. And She Hulk, also different storytelling and not the same cookie cutter thing. Again, made the people mad, but again, I loved it. Um, you I, know, I, just... like, I feel like at this point, people are just getting difficult the like the greater audience is becoming difficult to deal with because you're you're always you're getting some people who are going to be mad that it's too that it's yeah. cookie cutter and then you get some people are mad when you break the formula yeah you know, it's it's impossible to make everyone happy and you know it's and especially once you get to a something that's that huge and it's you have a lot of people with eyes on it and it's just hard to write a story that's going to make everyone happy so when you know, you don't go where they expect. Because like, it's the MCU is not going to follow any other through plot line of comic stories like, to like, exactly. Like before they started the whole multiverse crap, I went into it like, okay, every time an MCU movie comes out, it's called the, it's called the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It may have draws from other storylines and plot lines from like the comics and old TV shows and whatnot. But it's going to be slightly different, just like if it was its own timeline. That's how I would go in to approach things. And then, for the most part, enjoyed most of the stuff that came out. I and mean, then, when they brought in the multiverse, it made it more complicated. And I'm like, oh, well. Yeah. I mean, it, it the multiverse doesn't really change the fact that it could all be different timelines and things like that. Because if there's one thing we know about Marvel and also DC, it's that both of them have, like, a billion different timelines. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. But it's just that that's how I would go into it. But then a lot of people are like... You didn't adapt this exactly the way it was in the comics. How dare thee? And yes, I had that. Like, before we started recording, I said that about the X-Men movies, about the slight things that have changed. But, like, overall, it's an adaptation. There's going to be some changes. It's its its own timeline, quote-unquote, if you will. So it's like... But yet, a lot of people are just like, no, it has to be the way I want it. Meh. But it's, you either like it or you don't. It's not going to always at, be for at you. At some point, you've got to just start accepting that there's so much media out there that you can't get angry about all of it like be angry if something yeah. is just like if something is something you like and love and it's just written terribly fine be a bit angry about it maybe don't yeah. start a twitter boycott or something no because like not every piece of media is going to be for everyone that's a common thing a lot of thing that comes up with a lot of like movies and stuff nowadays anyways i'm not sure if this is slightly off topic but like Everyone expects it to be for everyone, but not every movie's going to be for everyone. It's literally it's, impossible. You know, it's literally impossible. So when it's not something that's geared towards what people think is what the main audience is, is, you know, usually people think, oh, the main audience is white people. Well, it's not always meant to be for white people. So here's this other thing we're going to do. It's different. 
And then people are like, oh, it's so woke. But it's like, no, these stories have existed for a while. Calm down. We're just finally getting it on the main screen. Calm down. This, <laughs> like <laughs> This may surprise you, but people who aren't white have existed longer than white people. <laughs> <gasps> <gasps> so there might be stories about them. <laughs> <gasps> what? I know the shock. I'm shocked. I'm appalled. Oh my god. Identity crisis. This like, is. Oh my gosh. I mean, if you're in my, if, if anyone listening to this is in my audience, chances are fairly high that this isn't going to be world shattering for you uh, at all. Be a problem, <laughs> and you're just gonna laugh along with us. If this is please new laugh along with us. You, if this is just occurring to you, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Sorry. It's not all about you. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not. Though everything is geared towards. Most things are geared towards you. It's not all about you, though. There's other people that want their th stories told and stuff. So, just letting you know. The the oldest human culture that we that like consistent human culture is Indigenous Australians. I said Indigenous terribly just there. Uh, <laughs> it is Indigenous Australians. They go back like fifty thousand years. Notably mm -hmm, not white, mm -hmm. and humanity mm -hmm. goes back much further to the, like, it's like the cradle of life or something it's called, and I don't know, that's a documentary, I think, um, in Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know. We're slowly off topic, but it's okay. But, I mean, the th that's the thing, though, is that, like, I, I, you've narrowed down a very specific audience who are very into what we're talking about, who create a lot of complaint when they see s hero mm -hmm. characters that aren't like them. And it's like, you yeah. have so many heroes that look and sound and believe all the same things as you. It is not going to kill you to give some space to everyone else. Exactly. And, like, picking on the MCU again, just for, like, the scope. It's, like, how many of the movies that have come out have non-white male leads? All but, like, four or five. And there's how many movies in the MCU? Oh, like, like, 20, 30, I don't know. 40? Like, I think, it, I think we're pushing 50, maybe. Like, or 40. Like, there's so many. And just because this last phase that we've been in maybe about half of ish haven't been male white leads and everyone's freaking the fuck out about it. And it's like, no, it's, you know, they're just slightly evening it out a bit. You're fine. You still got all this backlog of white maleness. You'll be fine. Calm down. And they still exist in other mediums. You're fine. Calm down. It is wild though as well, like, because identity is such a recurring theme in superhero stories. Right? <laughs> Right? And it's like, everyone has, you know, identity-seeking stuff, not just the white man. Like, everyone! Like, come on. Like, and everyone... Just, ah. Superman, and Batman, Iron Man, all of the yeah. X-Men. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, so uh, much. Captain America, to an extent, uh, Doctor Strange, all of these characters. Discover a Spider-Man is a huge one for that. Oh, yeah. Figuring out who they are and what their place in the world is is such a huge part of all these characters. Identity yeah. has always been a huge recurring theme in superhero stories, so naturally, many identities are going to be explored. Yeah, like Kamala Khan, she like Miss Marvel, she goes through that with her thing too. Like everybody's got some identity stuff and figuring out how they fit into like this developing you know like, we're sticking with the mcu a lot right now but like yeah. everyone's trying to figure their own crap out same with she hulk when she gets she's she's got to figure it out but then also just balance her hulkness while still wanting to live a normal life and so it's like everyone wants every, not everybody wants to be a superhero either everyone's I mean, trying to figure all their own crap out I mean, but yeah. it's like you know that's one of my favorite things about superhero stories is when they get into this these the moral stuff the identity stuff like Truly the least interesting part, I mean, I love a good action sequence, who doesn't? But truly the least interesting part of any story for me is how hard that one character can punch the other one in the face. <laughs> Though it can be fun to be like, yeah. Like, I'll admit, I've gone through arguments, I'm like, no, this character would totally kick this character's ass, because, oh, you know. Of course, we're nerds, we've done that. <laughs> of course, number crunching and all that fun stuff. But, but yeah, like. When it comes down to it, like being able to identify with characters and such and be fascinated by their personalities, what they do, how they do said things, and then watching them go through crap and 
you know have happiness happen to them and it's like hey you deserve it so much like you went through so much yeah, hardship i'm glad you're happy it's it's, it's funny like truly that like forever it in, in the world of super worlds plural even of superhero stories everything is so much extra so much more yeah and for, and for me like that makes the human element stand out even more mm-hmm like yeah, if you get too lost in like the lore sauce, good, it can good get luck with the lore. In most oh my god! Like the... is such a mess. Young Justice, near the end, every time we start a new episode, I would lean over to my boyfriend and be like, "Who's that? Who's that? Did we see them before?" They keep throwing in all these characters. Who's that big? Who's that? Like it was just so much near the end, but it was so good at the same time. But it was just like so much, and like I cried so much watching Young Justice, like. It was the emotions that happened and all the things, and I'm just like, I'm crying. It's just getting to me. It's so good. But then if you get too lost in the the lore sauce, you're just like, who is that? <laughs> like, I, mean, I don't want to remember this character. I mean, it's not even getting lost in the lore. Like, it's so easy to just get lost in the surface level explosions and flying and laser eyes and all that shit. That, that's what, that's oh, what right, people yeah. think about when they think of these stories, but the reality of it is, like, there's some genuinely complex, layered, deep emotional storytelling buried in superhero stories. Like, oh yeah, I, uh, I, I absolutely loved the Teen Titans cartoon growing up. I still love it. I, I haven't seen it for it. a very long time. I should go back and watch it. I never watched it. Oh, but that, but I do know the tough, some of the tough stuff that happened in some of those episodes, like they, the heavy crap happened. Oh, yeah, they deal with some like gen, like. For, for something that's got kind of like a goofy vibe for the most part, they deal with some really complicated storylines. There is a bird outside yeah. my window that agrees with me. Um, yeah. I, I love like I love when shows do that too, where it's like, yeah, we're happy-go-lucky, things are happening, but then it's like, oh, but we're also living in the real world. Here's some real world thing that happens. Like, I'm like, oof. Like, when... I Again, I've never seen the show, but I do remember seeing like a clip of a scene where... Cyborg's like, yeah, no, they don't want it. Like, something about like, how he looks. And he's like, oh, is it because you're half machine? He's all like, no, it's because I'm black or something. I think that, again, I'm paraphrasing. Don't remember, don't, again, never seen the show, but I remember seeing a clip of that and being like, oh, Cyborg, I love you. Let me hug you, man. Let me hug you. It's okay. I yeah, I mean, you there's, know? There's, that, there's, there's issues of, like, just, like, Robin's big thing of that, in that oh, yeah, series. Oh, yeah, PTSD and stuff with Robin, right? I don't know. I I think maybe there was some of that, but like his big thing is obsession. Mm. He's he's very much en route to basically becoming the next Batman, where right. where where the caped life, the cowl or whatever, is basically yeah. everything. And his whole like so much of his character arc through that show is learning to embrace being a person as well, and mm -hmm. you know, having relationships and friends. Yeah, you have they adapt a, a storyline called the Judas Contract. And I know, I've never mm. read the comics, but I know I know the, what the comics did, and I know what the cartoon did. And the cartoon does it better, and for memory, I think the creator of that storyline in the comics agrees. Ooh, they made a movie about it. Oh, interesting. I wonder if they did which one. That, which, which, DC which, animated which, movies are where it's at, y'all. Don't worry about the DCU. Watch legit. the animated movies. They know where it's at. That, that is very fair. <laughs> But that deals with like shifting allegiances and guilt and betrayal and in a very poignant and believable way without spoiling this children's cartoon from two thousand and one or whatever it was. <laughs> right. A little bit later than that. But uh the the final season deals a lot with Raven, whose whole storyline is basically I have to live with the fact that I'm basically destined to end the world <laughs> if I mm. I have to manage I have to keep all my emotions managed and buried and keep myself at a distance from people all the time because the minute I let that out I'm going to end everything <laughs> yeah that's a common trope with the with the whole like lady needing can keep her emotions in check or she'll end the world that's a pretty common trope <laughs> It is the the but, way this was the way like to me this didn't feel like a misogynistic take on it or anything like that. Like I feel mm. like a lot I feel like a lot of them a lot of time that sort of storyline is very leans very much into the the women are so emotional. This didn't feel like mm, that to okay. me. This very much just felt like this is a person who cannot let themselves 
ex truly allow themselves to feel or express genuine normal amounts of human emotion mm -hmm. all of their power including this link to basically super satan is tied to that super satan <laughs> and <laughs> super satan your newest hero <laughs> uh and i think that's really good uh but you touched on the cyborg thing, and it reminded me of a, uh, speaking of the DC cartoons, of the old Justice League cartoon, one of my favourite sets ah. of episodes, right? Good the show. Old... Good Justice League. Yeah, so good. I, I, let's see if you remember this one. Is that There's an episode where a bunch of the Justice League get chucked into an alternate universe, which turns out to basically be the continuity of a comic that the Green Lantern grew up reading. I and don't remember this episode. It's basically, the whole episode is, half paying tribute to and half parodying like the really cheesy old school like golden age uh yes DC oh and, i love the cheesy golden age stuff man and addressing the nostalgia of it all that it holds for people and the fact that you know the world wasn't that idealized it's not it's it's not necessarily real and we have to we can we can have fond feelings for the past, but we still have to move on and embrace the fact that time is moving forward. It was mm -hmm. like when you really start thinking about it, it's a really deep uh, storyline for how goofy and silly the episodes are. But it also throws in some stuff like the 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 token female superhero from the uh, alternate reality, you know, the sort of super friends uh, mm -hmm. parody. Is like, okay, yeah, the men can have their hero meeting, and now that the mission's done, I'm going to go bake cookies. And <laughs> and Hawk Girl is like, I'm sorry, we're gonna we're gonna what? <laughs> or yeah. uh this or the, you know, the that the, the Green Lantern in that series is John Stewart, who is black. And yes! at some point uh one of the comic the comic book heroes sort of turns around to him and goes, Good work, son, you are a credit to your people. Oh. And he's like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, that oof. oof. And he's the, one who, ha Stewart. he's the one who has all the love for this uh, for this comic book universe, because he's someone who grew up Right, right. Oh, the times, and, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, and it's, it's a fantastic study of like, yeah, this is what those stories were like back then. They were silly and funny and goofy. And they had kind of a bit of heart to them that maybe has been lost to an extent. I don't know if I agree with that, but they painted a very rose-tinted version of it for a lot of people that mm -hmm. wasn't. It wasn't really representative of the of a lot of people, and ultimately, it was a very good commentary on moving on, letting that go, because of course the yeah. whole plot line there involved having to let that comic book world die. Oh. And but was... yeah, things like change with the times for sure. Yeah. It's like yeah, things don't always age because like you like things can't really age really with the people who, uh, like who enjoyed it originally. Because like at this point, all they would like so, like uh, sorry words. Batman would be dead by now. But like if they ate, technically quote unquote aged the characters with the people who grew up reading them originally when they first came out, it's like you know they have to yeah. you know write them for the times. They have to adapt and evolve. If not, then they're just gonna die out. Because if they keep the whole like, like you were saying the tropes of like ah oh, yes the women done beating up a superhero. Let me go bake dinner for like my husband who has a nine to five and doesn't do anything else while I do everything. And like you know, and then like with the race and stuff, it's like they, you can't keep that in your comic books. It's not, it's not happening this yeah. time, like in this day and age it's... anymore. All, uh, yeah, words are failing me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you have to change, you have to adapt, and you know, grow the characters to match what's going on in today's societies and stuff. And then you know, because yeah, or else it'll just die out. Yeah, I mean, like, like a lot, a lot of the core characters we know from DC and Marvel. They originated in the 40s and 50s. <laughs> yeah. Like, so. Obviously, these yeah. characters are, like, a lot of the people who were writing those stories, most of them, are dead now. Yeah. Young, different generations have taken up the mantle and brought more mm. of their experiences and identity to the characters, and, the, and they're just going to change a bit over time. I think as yeah. long as the core of the character remains the same, that's okay. Unless the For core sure. of that character was 
horrendous racism at which point maybe just stop writing that character um, <laughs> yeah because like i know some people like have issues with like certain adaptations of newer characters because like the original creation of those characters were really horrible like uh like in the mcu uh bear the baron whatever his face is the guy that was controlling the winter soldier oh, like Zelensky or something like that yeah 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 you know what i'm talking Wait. about no. Um, Isn't what? that the Ukrainian president? <laughs> yeah, that's the president. What? But it is a Z. Is it Zemo? Baron something. Zemo, maybe. Baron it's a Z. Zemo. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, yeah. I was like, what? No. Yeah, Zemo. Sorry. I should edit. Yeah. That so Baron out. Zemo. I like, won't, everyone... but I should. <laughs> yeah. Well. So like, in but anyways, like the character, everyone's like, oh, Baron Zemo. He's so you know whatever. It's like. Sure, he's a, he's against that, but he's still technically a horrifying, horrible person. And like in the original comics, he was still a horrifying, horrible person. Like you don't glorify that just be, you know it's, it's it's weird. And so same thing with Peggy Carter. I've seen some people be iffy about Peggy Carter because they essentially took two characters and meshed her into one. Because like the character that she's technically based on is her name wasn't Peggy, and then the original Peggy Carter was actually a Nazi. Oh wow. And, yeah, so people are like, like a lot of people don't care. Like I didn't really care at the time. I still kind of don't, but I understand why people are upset about it. Because yeah, the original Peggy Carter, she was a Nazi and manipulative of Captain America and all that stuff. But like a lot of the her personality and stuff that she that they got for the movie and stuff came from a different character. Or is it Cynthia Glass? And no, it's Cynthia Glass is what I'm thinking about. My bad. No, Peggy Carter is. Sorry, Cynthia Glass is the personality and everything who was the Nazi that they based Peggy Carter on. Okay. Who? Okay, that's who I'm thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, Cynthia the, Glass the from example, Marvel. The example I know of that one is Hank Pym, the like original Ant Man who uh, yeah mentors Scott. Because in the comics, apparently, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for one thing, he was one <clears> of the founders <throat> of the Avengers. But obviously, that's not the comic a continu yeah. the continuity they go with in, in the uh, MCU. Oh yeah, but, no, yeah. Which Hank was supposed to be originally, yeah. Yeah, uh, and he was like a big on the domestic violence, so you know. Oh. And <laughs> and people have issues with the fact that that's been sort of washed out of the character, not because they think domestic violence is good, but because they feel like it's weird that it's not being addressed. And I'm like, is it really that important? Like, yeah, if, like, it's one thing if you were, if if you were using him to explore a story about how this hero is a dick behind the scenes, but that's not what he's being used for here. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why that? Why that would be issue? But then also, yeah, I see it from your point too, where it's like, yeah, it's not. This is a you know, it's not part of the evolution of the character anymore. Because yeah, domestic violence not good. So why would we keep that for the character? But yeah, if it's, yeah I mean, unless it's exploring uh, like, that storyline, yeah. then yeah. And here's the thing, like, it's like you said, like, earlier, these are old characters, you know, they've yeah. been around for so long, they have to change and evolve, but, all, and, but also <clears throat> just, it's not his story, he's a side character. Like, if yeah. he was the main character, maybe we would have learned that he was a bit of a dick. Yeah. But we don't know. It's not a like. It's not really about his personal life or whatever. He exists as the mentor character to teach Scott how to be Ant Man. That's all he's there for. If you mm -hmm. want, and if you want to see a story exploring how superheroes maybe not so super in reality, I mean, there's so much that does that now that explores those storylines. Mm -hmm. That's the entire premise of Invincible and the Boys, and probably like fifty other things. Is that I gotta watch scenes. all those still. It's also so a, many. It's also as a second shot. Uh, huge thing in the Wormverse is that sometimes superheroes are, are not good people. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's but it's yeah, not good people. The thing is though, I don't. I definitely don't want us to see to see us get to a point where that's the only kind of superhero story we get either. If we circle back around to one of the very first things we talked about, I I think it's important we have both kinds of story like oh yeah we like superheroes don't need to be uniformly perfect paragons nor per uniformly anti-heroes i think it's perfectly fine to have both and better that you do because it stops things from getting stale yeah for sure no no i agree and yeah sorry it was cynthia glass who was the nazi but they just changed her name to peggy carter 
but then they put her in the movies. That's Look, what I happened. would have completely bought whatever you said there because I don't know anything <laughs> about that. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the nerd's coming after me. I got it wrong. I'm sorry. But yeah. So I'm like, okay, she I understand like, why. You get some random straw from one of your streams. Like, you said the wrong Nazi. Like, I know, I'm sorry. The real Sydney thing turned like, wasn't a Nazi. It was Cynthia. I'm sorry. Cynthia just doing ah. like overcooked or something, glance at Jack. Just like, wait, what? What did I talk about Cynthia? I don't talk about Cynthia on here. What are you talking about? Um, yeah, but. Oh, we just had a mental blank. That's not, that's not. I know. I was like, I know there was something I wanted to mention. There was something I wanted to mention and I completely lost it. I don't know. Adaptations of characters. I don't know. As far as. Well, it's interesting. I suppose we 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 have talked a lot primarily about and like uh Marvel and DC, but it's like speaking of adaptations, we'll see, we'll see if this triggers any memories. Probably not. But like realistically, this is this has spread so much further than just Marvel and DC at this point. Mm-hmm. Like again, you have Invincible. Uh, uh, the boys is there. You have. <gasps> I remember. Hey, there we go. That's good because I, I had no idea where I was going with that. No, I remember what I wanted to mention, because, like, you mentioned um, those other superheroes that weren't Marvel and DC, and that made me think about Jupiter is Ascending, which was canceled after one season, which also is, like, superhero stuff. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, Jupiter is Ascending? Is it, I, Ascended? Thought that was, I thought that was just, a, like, a what-off sci-fi movie. No! No, that Jupiter is Ascending! I did it again! It's Jupiter's Legacy! Oh! <laughs> don't know that either, but... <laughs> Jupiter's Legacy. I have so much happening in my brain. No, Jupiter's Legacy was a TV show. It was adapted from a comic book series um, that ended in 2022, apparently. It got canceled after one season. And I enjoyed it up until the last episode because it made... Because, like, the premise of it is that um, it it has two storylines happening where it's, like, the first six... People get these superpowers because they go to this island, they unlock some ancient power, and it releases into the world, but also releases bad people. They get powers too. So they are they go out and they contain the bad people, but they make it so that way they they uh, in order to be one of them, you have to prom uh, you have to promise to never kill anybody. I think that's the main thing is like you don't kill anybody. Like even if they're evil and they've killed people, when you're capturing them, you don't kill anyone. But because they're so, like, overly righteous about it, it, you know, a lot of people, like, the youngins, as they join their group and stuff, end up dying. This is first episode crap, everybody. This is not that big of a spoiler. I'm sorry. That people end up dying because they're so, like, yeah, sure, he's killing your comrades, but you're not allowed to kill them, or, you know, we may have to kill you, but it's, like, a whole thing. But it's, like, what? And so it's because of that sticking to it, it's left a lot of things all effed up. And it's interesting, and it's cool, and it's, like, you're going overly super righteous to the point where it's, like, detrimental, and it's, like, you're trying to stick to your guns that hard, but it's, like, ooh, and it was cool until the last episode when they're, like, here's how they got their powers, and I'm, like, what? You, what? They talk so, such a big thing about them having to go through all that crap on the island, but basically they just walk across it, open a door. I'm sorry, slightly spoiler. But I'm just, like, okay. Like you had me, you had, you had me. You had some and then like this really happened. interesting moral dilemma storyline here, and yeah, then you were like, like "What if we just made the finale about something else?" Yeah, but like they had the two storylines going on, so it's like the modern day with their older after they've had the powers for I think they're over a hundred years. Oh, now. it's like a split timeline thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, the two timelines. So it's like showing them when they're trying to get to the island and then get there. Because it, it happens right when the Great Depression starts, like when the stock market crashes is when the first timeline starts. Okay. And then the second timeline is when they're older, they've had kids, their kids are all fucked up and they're, you know, the one is off doing drugs and doing all this stuff, stuff. And then the other one is trying to, you know, be the golden child as a thing. But, you know, um, and there's a few other kids or whatever. They don't really touch on all that much. Um, it's like, you know, they're not around for that long because they end up, you know, bye. Because of stuff. Um but, like, the entire time, it's, like, the dad is all, like, no, we don't kill anybody. But the wife at that point is kind of getting, like, 
you know, you're hurling into your righteousness so long. It's kind of, you know, she, this young child just literally went on her first mission with me and she died in my arms. Like, what the fudge, man? And so it's like a whole thing. And it's like, I thought it was cool and interesting that part. But then I also kind of called the twist in the first episode too. And I was like, dang it. Why'd they have? So it was kind of dissatisfying in both of those. But it still left me with a little bit of a... <gasps> I want to see what happens next, kind of still, but they canceled it, so I now I guess I'll have to read the comics, but who's got the time to read the comics? I'm just like, just give me the dang thing, but it was interesting to watch give that kind of a story. Off season two. <laughs> give me season two, please. Uh, but it was really interesting, because that's what kept me, too, because I'm just like, yeah, you're doing this thing where it's like, you're hyper, like, righteousness and all this stuff and it was really cool and interesting and it's like watching the bad guys being like ha, i can do all this crap and i'll get away with it because you ain't going to kill me ha 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 and well, it was interesting yeah i mean that's that that's what a, that's a really interesting and it's a common theme to varying degrees in superhero stories i think but it's it's always interesting to see it done well this idea of mm -hmm. where do they where do they draw the line Mm -hmm. What is okay? Because they're not cops. No. Uh, you know, they're not beholden to a government necessarily. They are too powerful to be bound realistically by our laws. Like, what prison is going to hold these people? So they yeah, have to hold themselves accountable to their own morals. But where yeah. do they draw the line? Like, obviously a lot of heroes famously have no kill rules. It's Superman's got a big thing about that. Batman's usually got a big thing about that. Yeah. And it does it and it is a common theme of I could end this person right now and save hundreds of lives, but I would be betraying my own morality to do it and I and like and it, it is often a thing that comes up like is it okay for me to do this? Sometimes it comes up with you is it okay for me to even be doing what I'm doing? That's what that's one of the things I ended up really liking about uh going back to I ended up really liking about some of the uh stuff in the MCU. Or to I don't I'm not as familiar with it because I read the comic, but also just the Civil War arc in the comics, which is slightly different, but they both deal with that same theme of is what we are doing okay? What is holding yeah. us accountable for our actions? Yeah, but then yeah, and then the Civil War thing, it's like, okay, we're being beholden, but like, but then we're strictly being regimented by this government, which is, you know, we can't really always trust the government to know what's right and stuff either, so it adds layers yeah, to that. Yeah, it's complicated. And yeah, Civil War was a great movie. Love Civil War. Great movie. So, my understanding of the comic version of that is, instead of it being like the Sokovia Records, basically, or anything like that, a is that I think it's something like a group of like junior heroes or something gets a bunch of kids killed or they all die or something. Uh, it's it's a whole big thing. It spirals out of control, uh, and people start sort of going, "Okay, they fucked up. Heroes need to be held accountable." So they want to start a register of heroes, who they are, what their identities are, and everything. To mm -hmm. uh, as I'm not too familiar. Yeah, with I'm, the original comics I'm not either. Super familiar with it either, but it was pretty dark. Surprisingly, I wasn't expecting it to be like. I wouldn't that. be surprised. Yeah, uh, and... like I do know in the comics they did it. They did a new Civil War arc, but it was different. Where it was like I think because like Captain Marvel, I I think it was Captain Marvel, who's also got like the whole like overly righteous policing complex sometimes, um, because like she's very like yeah straight and narrow in the comics, um. I think she's got like a power or either she saw it or somebody told her about it where they saw somebody commit a crime in the future, but they hadn't commit that said crime. And it was a crime that would be devastating enough to like hurt a lot of people or whatever. And so they're like, yo, preemptively, let's just arrest this person. But they're like, they've never, they had, haven't done it yet. So should we arrest them for something they never haven't committed? But it's like, well, they're going to commit. It's like, do we? Are they going to commit it now that we know that they're going to do it? Because now we're kind of messing with the time streams. Do it. <laughs> yeah, or is it is it because of our actions? Will they do it, or do we leave it alone and it won't happen? We don't know. And then you get into time crap and all that fun stuff. But that was a different, again, like different kind of morality thing that was happening in that one. Oh, it's called Civil War Two, I think. Is okay. yeah, it debuted in J June twenty sixteen. I remember. Yep, that was what it was called. Civil War Two, so that was a different thing. But yeah, I, I, Between... it's a, a basic issue, I suppose, is 
uh, not really, I guess. It is a little bit different, but it is kind of like the the same broader sense of what are our responsibilities? Where do we draw yeah. the line? And it does get interesting when you start having them disagree. Yeah. Because not everyone's going to just, not everyone's going to agree. Not everyone's going to be on the same page. Everyone's going to have their own range of moralities and, and things it, they like, are beholden to. And it, it is it, it is easy enough to understand how that could spiral into something like actual violent conflict because so it many happens of, in the real world without yeah, superpowers, all the time, like yeah. <laughs> like right now, exactly and everywhere. Yeah, uh, and then on a superhero level, it just like feels even like more potentially destructive because of they're all thrusting around their powers and shit i mean everything like, it's like i said earlier on everything in a superhero setting is more mm -hmm. so any any basic conflict you have could exploit out of control and you know a lot of the x-men storyline deals with a kind of similar issue especially like again not super familiar with the comics or anything but the, like the first x-men movie deals a lot with this this idea of yeah should we have a register for all these people with powers and keep mm -hmm. tabs on and them? Would... Because they are mm -hmm. dangerous. You know, it's... Some of the analogs to, like, racial or uh, gender or sexual identity stuff or religious identity yep. stuff get a bit muddled because of the fact that the the X-Men and other mutants actually do have... They, they pose a legitimate threat. Ignoring the fact that in the comics they exist in the exact same continuity as all these other superheroes wandering around, which dilutes it a lot in my opinion. I know, right? Uh, right. The, the movies, not a problem. <laughs> oh yeah, no, because they're it's in the Fox universe. It's the Fox versus the Foxmen, as we call them sometimes. Owned by it's Disney separate. Now. Owned by Disney now, so I guess they're gonna be part of it now. Yeah. So they haven't showed up yet. They teased us, but they hasn't showed up yet. Um. I just hope they do them right this time. Because it's, cause... Such a, it's, it's I, I, I harbor great concerns because I think the, I think the X Men actually do like the whole mutant storyline works much better separate from all the other superpower stuff. I agree. Uh, I agree. Like them on their own, yeah, they're fantastic. They don't need nobody else messing with their crap. They got a lot. They've got so much happening with their own storylines, with people, things from space coming in ancient magics and god stuff you know they don't even need the other superheroes they've got their own things happening like if you watch the tv shows i've watched basically all the tv shows all of them like uh wolverine and the x-men which only was one season which is a shame it should have been more the original like i've seen so i've seen so much like i've seen some of the anime ones awesome. too like x-men is my bread and brother you want me to rant and rave about something x-men is what it is so I just, you know. So basically, if John is still sick next week, I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got an X Men episode next week? Don't know yet. <laughs> oh well, if you want, if you want an X Men exclusive episode, that's my that's my thing. We usually we usually me. plan these a lot more well in advance. What we're doing for each thing. I know that I've got a worm episode, but because just you know dating when we actually record these episodes a bit but because we had the christmas break and everything happen and people have been sick and all that all i no idea what, what i'm writing for the fourth episode or <laughs> what we're doing for the next one uh cool so it's a mystery for me as much as it's for you audience <laughs> but where was i going with x-men we were talking about i would say i really i think that's an interesting moral quandary right is this idea of should we have a register of these people who can do oh, these yes. incredible things? Because on the one hand, it is an invasion of privacy to be on a list mm -hmm. because of something you can't control. Yeah, but and then the people token, could find out your... We make people Sorry, go ahead. We make people register guns and cars and things which are incredibly dangerous and keep track of Except that. in America. Except in America. They don't register guns in America. I'm, I'm sure you have. You don't need a license. You and I'm I'm Canadian. For the record, I'm Canadian. In America, you don't have to have a license to own a gun. I'm sure that depends state by state. No, 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 no. You, it, it, mm, 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 mm. there's a there there there's a lot of stuff happening. Right, getting off topic. There's a lot of stuff happening in America right now that wants to have more gun laws, oh, more regulations, because I mean, they don't problems. have that. <laughs> oh yeah, well it. <laughs> 
v registering yeah the people they would probably do this before they put more gun laws over in america because like they just had another shooting and people are just saying it's it would only slap a band-aid on it but it really it would make things a lot more better if they put more reg regulations but anyways oh, yeah. Look, they I would could, be more I, likely I could, to I register down that rabbit hole i talk about that for a very long time but we're not doing a politics cast <laughs> Yeah, no, we're not. No, we're not. But uh, technically, though, the X Men stuff is a little bit political because I mean, you know registering and stuff. Political. Yeah. Uh, oh, for uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they would definitely they have registering people. Yeah, because if you're on the list and if that list gets exposed, that could like ruin you. Like your neighbors could find out and be like, "We don't want you in our neighborhood." Similarly, what people would do with other types of minority groups and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, register. It feels like, that. It, like it feels like it's a dangerous thing to do like on the one hand you can understand unlike with like things just like racial identity or whatever you can very much understand why a list of mutants might be a good idea because they by their very existence are a perpetually open carry basically they are perpetually yeah. a, a loaded gun yeah which okay that one kid who does nothing but blink and make tvs flick probably not a problem but Oh, he was uh, great. But, you know, uh, Kitty Pride could just walk into a nuclear facility or a bank or anything without... Yeah. Nothing could stop her doing that. You've no, but again... It all, borderline yeah. immortal. P people who can read your mind. Right, but then again, with anything, it's all on, based on people's morality because there's people who yeah. do bad shit that don't have superpowers, and so that extends the conversation even more. It's like, why? <laughs> We're registering all these people, but it's like there's people who are not on this registry who do bad shit all the time, and they're getting away with it because they don't have freaking powers that, to be on a registry or anything. That's like, ah! Yeah. Also, just looking at what happened with the fact that Magneto's whole brotherhood exists, ignoring the fact that it was originally the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, I think they've dropped that. <laughs> as they, they, yeah. they realize it may have hurt the, the, the message a little bit over time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, that whole thing, by persecuting these people because of the fact they are potentially dangerous, you've given rise to a sect of them that is dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, so like, cool, we're just gonna feed off of this hate thing to fuel our mission because, yeah, you're putting us in danger. And then you got all these sentries out here shooting at us when we're shopping in the mall. Like, what the heck, man? It was a call to the TV show, the original animated show, the first episode. It's a great, great episode. I mean, vaguely remember something about that. But yeah, it's... yeah, they're shopping in the mall, and then a sentry comes in because they're hunting down Jubilee, and Jubilee's all like, no, please, I just want to be a teen. And then Storm's all like, Bitch, let me change my clothes with some uh, some lightning thunder here, and I'm gonna beat you up, and it's great. And they're like, save Jubilee! It's fantastic. But yeah, like, it's... It's it's another thing, like... It's just another example of the depth a superhero story could actually go to if you start thinking about it more in just terms of, hey, this character's gonna beat up this character this week. Like, and don't get me wrong, as we've established, that is fun. We do love superheroes yeah. and villains and other powered individuals beating the crap out of each other. That is entertaining. <laughs> yeah, and like, I recently learned a lot of, like, over the last couple of years, because a few creators I follow on TikTok, I recently learned about, like, a lot of the origins for a lot of characters, because, like, a lot of superheroes were created by Jewish people, and so then those characters are inherently Jewish. And so one character I found fascinating learning about it was Captain America actually is an allegory for a golem from the Jewish um, religion. Like, because, yeah, yeah. like, it was create. And so I thought that was so cool because, like, he was created before America joined the, se the Second World War. And they were kind of like, hey, help. Because, you know, things are happening over there that are horrible. And then they're all like, no, not yet. And then, you know, then they made the comic. Yeah. They had I mean, Captain America punching Hitler. It was great. That famous image, yeah. I mean, tell, yeah. Me, tell me if you've heard this story before. Famous, famous story. Special child separated from parents. Mm. Raised by different community. Turns out to be incredibly powerful uses that power for the good of others mm -hmm. following a strict code of morality mm -hmm. superman or moses both exactly and that was intentional because uh super superman was created by a pair of jewish immigrants mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of stuff yeah like there there is a lot of surprising layers to a lot of this stuff yeah like, 
like even when you go back to way back to like before superheroes were super necessarily yeah you have you know people subverting authority for the benefit of the less less fortunate and things like that you know it's yeah doing stuff for the yeah for those who can't do much for themselves like even like even like robin hood going around yeah. stealing money for, for the poor everyone's and stuff, favorite like... communist yeah steal from the rich give to the poor yeah, e- even folk heroes going way back that far, which are sort of mm-hmm. even further than like the pulp heroes, or, like the fad and stuff. Is also arguably where this sort of thing started. Like, there is layers to this stuff, interesting origins, and then and then the moral ethical questions and all that. Like, I feel like, especially in this era of oversaturation of MCUs and DCEUs and all the gritty s- stories and the non-gritty, whatever, superhero stories everywhere that people only really think of the spectacle and don't give enough credit to the, to the like, layers of yeah. history to the stories mm-hmm. or to the moral and ethical and human elements to the stories. Like, you can tell some, some j- truly heartfelt, interesting, moving stories in a superhero setting. It's not it's sure. not just about okay, sometimes it's about punching the green goblin in the face. But it's not oh, always yeah, about that. Oh yeah, cuz he deserves it. No. We got to do some green goblin punching cuz you know that Willem Dafoe laugh, you got to shut him up sometimes. It's too maniacal. It's too good. <laughs> Tell me a perfect casting has never existed. <laughs> just that. I'm That's off, the yeah. Oh, well, uh oh, the the actor others. who played well, yeah, like the actor who played Mr. Kim is playing Iro in the live action avatar show so like that's also perfect casting like come on come on he is iroh but yeah no willem dafoe is green goblin just chef's kiss so good yeah yeah on that note though uh that is about an hour of uh glorious superhero content we we did it already yeah i know it feels like we could keep going for another couple hours but forever or forever however uh people's attention spans aren't that long (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> fair so we will leave that one there if you are listening to this on uh, spotify or google podcast or something like that uh you could also find these episodes on my website radfordwrites.com where i also will share story transcripts and blogs and article posts and all that kind of stuff and you can find me on twitter at radfordwrites 7 yes twitter still making that joke uh <laughs> or uh, Blue Sky, I guess. I'm sort of there, where I'm uh, Radford Wrights. And you can find... Well, where, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on most social media at Marv underscore Missy on Twitch, Twitter, Blue Sky. TikTok is two underscores, so it'd be Marv underscore underscore Missy, but I don't really do much over there. Um, but yeah, on YouTube as well. I'm everywhere. I have a lot of socials, and I can't control them all there's too many but you know i'm there twitch is the most active one that i'm on and also uh secrets of slumber still exists and you should all go read it yeah new episode went up today though this is obviously coming out way after but actually it went up like 16 minutes ago so you have something to read after oh shit hi (laughs) (laughs) tell me more about the weird kid (laughs) no spoilers (laughs) Uh, and you know, maybe I will manage to talk Marv into coming back. Maybe there'll be an X Men episode at some point. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but until then, uh, yeah, goodbye. Goodbye!